Today we had a really quite exciting roundtable discussion hosted by Cooper Vision and OT. The purpose of the roundtable discussion today was really to capture what works in terms of myopia management. So it was really nice just talking around myopia control, um, what it's about, how practitioners can get involved with it, who should get involved with it. It's not about fitting lenses necessarily, but we have the at-risk emetrope who we then need to talk to the parents about playing outdoors and reducing the screen use. Just making them aware of the risks and the future risks. So you're not actually selling anything at that point. Initially, we're just giving advice. We looked at the best ways to communicate my site to patients and to parents. Some of the things that have gone very well for us, the things that have gone less well. There's two reasons why people go for myopia management and it's either because it's the risk of them becoming more and more short-sighted or it's about the risks of developing um, eye health problems. And I think different parents care more about one or more about the other. I think because we, we can't predict what's going to happen for an individual, so you can't be certain that they are definitely going to have that future ocular pathology, but the risk is greater. Likewise, if we fit them with a myopia management strategy, we don't know if that's 100% going to work in that child. I think it's important to set out those kind of expectations at an early stage. If we think about it's a, a risk from the, from the contact lenses, then I, I think those risks are minimal versus the risks of you don't do anything in terms of letting that myopia progress to the higher levels. One thing that was really nice from today was realising that we are all pretty much doing the same things and on the same learning curve and have all pretty much come to the same conclusions when it comes to how to do manage myopia. I do think that, um, that you're not fulfilling your full duty of care if you're not at least discussing the option with the patient, you don't necessarily have to fit it yourself. I don't think doing nothing is negligent in itself. You can just tell them that the research is there and then they can find a practitioner that will do it if you won't. As word spreads and people, patients become more informed about it, you're going to feel more and more uneasy as a practitioner if you're not discussing these sorts of options with patients. If they're not expected to find that out themselves, they should be getting that from you. I think it doesn't take too much effort to learn and if you're already fitting contact lenses, especially to young people, it's not a big jump to move over to giving them a lens that will help manage their myopia. We've had it for you know, coming up to five years. It's just like fitting a, a single vision lens. So if you fit a single vision soft to disposable lens, then you can fit a MySight lens. If you're changing a child from a single vision contact lens to MySight, you might just need to point out the vision might feel a little bit strange first few days, maybe the first week, and they just need a little bit of hand-holding through that period, and point out that that ghosting that they might see, a few halos they might see, is normal, and it's part of, of wearing that lens. And I think once they realise, oh, that's not normal, they adapt to it really quickly. It's a really good way of feeling good about your job and helping people, but it's also a big money, bu money build of practices. Yeah. The lenses are more expensive, yeah. so they bring in more money, and you're also fitting lenses to people who otherwise would not yeah. go for them. And if you've got a parent in front of you who's minus six and thinks, where was this when I was becoming myopic? Mm -hmm. They they see it as a really positive mm -hmm. story. Yeah. yeah. I think they like the fact that they that you don't know everything and you're at the forefront and of, you, you yeah. haven't waited for all the answers. Mm -hmm. You're doing something that's new and exciting. You're absolutely and, uh, right. And your child's and at the forefront. Yeah. What's great to see is that regardless of where you practice, you can absolutely get involved with myopia management and be successful. It's not too different to what you do at the moment. It just takes some little tweaks. So don't be scared of it. Just get in and have a go, um, but make sure you're prepared and, uh, and uh, confident with it. We know a lot about myopia now. We don't know everything about it, but what we do know is enough to get off our backsides and actually start doing something. And with myopia management or myopia control, you have an opportunity now to really make a difference to a child's life. And we're in the business of making a difference to people's sight.